Hey guys, my name is Fallen One. I am bringing you a PC build guide for 2014. This is for you guys out there who want to buy something for people for Christmas and also want to upgrade their PC for some parts or they're just buying a PC just for the hell of it and they want something that can run games and have fun, guys, for this Christmas. So let's just jump right into it. Let's talk about the PC we're going to be building. Our modest game build is basically on PC Part Picker. This is brought to you by PC Part Picker, not the actual episode, but this build is brought to you by PC Part Picker. Our modest gaming build is built around the i5-4460, which we'll be using in the build. If you do not plan to overclock, which we are not doing because this is not a K mod, which is not unlocked, and this motherboard is not compatible for an overclock. So, let me just continue reading, overclock your computer. This is arguably the best mid-range processor on the market for an unclockable motherboard and unclockable processor. So... Let's start talking about the parts that we're going to be using in this build. And I'm going to show you some things that I've been noticing. And also, I'm going to show you some alternatives to some parts that we're going to be using, which can be used to overclock. So let's start with the power supply. The Corsair CX Series 750 watt. I chose this one because in the build, it said a 600 watt. But here I see it's for $86.63. Even brand new, it says 76.58, which is still comparable to the 750 which is an extra 150 watts is less and it's prime which is a better deal for me so i can if i ever choose to add another part to mine like another graphics card for any reason i have a power supply ready for it and this is modular so i'm ready to go for it might as well get this now because it says it's on prime it's on sale this is beautiful number one seller go for this 750 watt even if you're future planning i would get the 750 watt now and secure it because it's on sale Moving on to the case. The case is a range of things. And now, like I said in the other video or my recent videos, this is probably going to be an 800 to to $1,000 build. So this PC case is going to range on what's your preference, really. My preference was this mini ITX, which I made a mistake with, which is it's beautiful, but it's only beautiful if you have the ability to buy a good, amazing graphics card because you cannot run an SLI and you or you, the crossfires you can't do that you only can use one graphics card so you have to buy a top tier like a 970 gtx and i couldn't do that so i bought a 270x radon r9 and it kind of bottlenecks and it's a piece of shit to be honest i'm not going to curse it out and say it's bad but if you're going to buy a case buy something big so you can always upgrade or you can add more stuff like you can run your card in sli or crossfire so choosing this case you have to choose wisely because I chose something big as this case, but more beautiful and like aesthetically pleasing. Because I like windows in my PCs. I don't like looking at the complete darkness. I like to be able to see what's going on in my PC, especially when I water cool. So if anything starts dripping or anything, I can see directly into it. I don't have to take off the sides. I can see directly what's going on completely in my PC. Moving on to the motherboard that we're going to be using. This is from Newegg. I changed over from Amazon. I'm jumping because their prices go down to certain websites. This is the Asus H97 Pro 4 LGA 1150 Intel HD H97 SATA 6GB USB 3.0 ATX Intel motherboard. I choose this motherboard or they chose this motherboard for one reason. It's an LGA 1150. Now understand about the 1150 motherboards, which is very beautiful and you should know this because I didn't know this beforehand until recently, even though I had my computer for about a year now. And I know that I should have known this, and I kind of find stupid that I didn't know it. Making sure that's recording still. That basically, the L50 or 1150 is the most beautiful series. Because 1155, it ends at 3770K, which is very low on the motherboard end. Because it's an i5, not a motherboard a processor, because low, very low because an i5. Now... Like I just said, i5s are primarily for gaming. Now, if you're only going to game, you can go for this and go for the 3770K or the best example is the 3570K, which I have and everybody loves. But say you want to do some rendering, you want to do some YouTube, you want to do some gaming, all at the same time while going on Skype and talking to your friends or your group. Now, you want a hyper-threaded card or an AMD multi-core processor it's either or and it's really hard to choose because when i see amd i see temperature and when i see intel i see price so it's basically a give and take of what you want to do because you can choose over change over the mother door a motherboard to an a or an fm or an am plus three and go with a 9530 i'm pretty sure it's called i could be wrong you guys can correct me an FX 9530 and choose that, but you need to water cool it. I would advise or a 12 or 212 Evo air cool it. That's my opinion. I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong. And someone could correct me in the comments. You can choose that 
or you can go with the Intel 3770K, 3770K, or you can go with a 4770K, but that's going to be 1150 motherboard. But back to this build, as you can see, this is a pretty basic motherboard, nothing special about it. It's really basic. It's not amazing, but it, it'll get the job done. Moving on to the CPU, it's 1150, like I said about the motherboard. Fits perfectly. It's snugly. This is the best you can get. And also it's compatible with a Z87 and a Z97. These are overclockable boards. But this is not overclockable CPU. So keep that in mind. So if you get these motherboards, don't expect to overclock. They're just normal motherboards until you get an overclock one, which usually has a K at the end of it. I'm pretty sure the X and the S are overclockable. But I would check that and make sure before agreeing with that. Moving on. Let's move on to the desktop memory. Let's go to the G Skill. Aries series, 8 gigabytes, 2 sticks of 4 gigabytes, 240 pin, DDR3, 1600. This is beautiful for this price because I bought my Rip Jaws and I'm pretty sure it was like higher. I think it was like 2100 DDR3. I could be wrong. I don't really remember. 2133, something like that. And it was like 84.99. And this is beautiful to be honest for $54. I'm not really don't know about the Aries series that much i know about rip jaws rip jaws is beautiful plus it's red so i already had to gravitate towards it because my whole pc is red and black now moving on to the most beautiful and the most strategic the most complicated part of a whole build besides the cpu it's the graphics card graphics cards can be very dangerous because certain people tend to cut corners at certain parts like, they'll look at the CPU and be like, oh, this has to be at max. The graphics card can be a little bit lower. No, you can't just do that. You need to think about both and how they work with each other because both of each other can mess each other up or they can work together. Now, looking at this, they chose the 290, not 290X. So, make sure you look at that correctly. It's the 290. And I compared the 290 to the 280X. It beats it. The 290 is nice, but this is such an old generation of card the way i look at it because i'm looking at even though it's a higher price you're getting a better deal you can choose the 970 gtx or the 980 the 980 is really high the reason i chose the 970 even though it's a lot of money and you have to cut corners for this build it's because it compares to the 780 ti which is like 500 dollars, and the 970 gtx is about 300 dollars or 350 and I find that a huge price difference so if you want to get this card I would do a little bit more research on the graphics card you would choose because it's a very picky thing because prices drop and fluctuate so quickly so this is like a hit or miss thing but I would choose this overall because this is the most beautiful price to ratio product you can possibly get at this moment of making this video moving on to an SSD card now I have a real controversy about this I'm not a fan of SSD cards due to the fact if I don't have a lot of memory, I can't add an SSD card to try to make up for it. Like, as I said, I have two drive bays. I can't add an SSD because I don't have memory to really have an SSD inside. Because when I look at this and I look at our, our actual internal hard drive, I see this. I see one terabyte for $47, which is amazing. But then if I switch it over two terabytes, as you can see right here, it switches to $79.99 which is the total price of the SSD. So right now, basically, I can choose to get a one terabyte and get a two terabyte, have a total of three terabytes, or I can choose to get one terabyte and 240 gigabytes of SSD. SSD is basically, if you don't know what an SSD is, it's basically whatever thing you put on it, it reads it faster and loads it up faster. So if I put my Windows 7 on it, it will load it faster. I don't have to wait. I'm so used to console gaming that it really doesn't bother me the wait time. So I never really had time to buy SSD. And I've seen a better deal than this. I've seen a 248 gigabyte or 240 gigabyte on Tiger Direct currently on sale for Cyber Week, the new thing, for $90. And it's a beautiful deal, but I'm not an SSD fan until I get my new computer. Moving on to the last part, which you've already seen. I know you're not really hyped up for it, but it's the Toshiba One terabyte let me switch it over right here for $47.99 all your memory everything you need can go on to this I'm pretty sure by the time you finish this you'll be ready to upgrade your computer and have your stuff ready now that we're done with this I'm gonna show you basically what 
my other build was like the upgradable parts and what you can have to overclock this moving this over here now I'm keeping the power supply normal at 750 watts so if you chose the 750 watts you can stay with the 750 watts and that's what I mean so if you upgrade you can always keep the same wattage but the other things I changed was the hard drive not the hard drive the CPU and the motherboard for the CPU I chose the i5-4690K which is perfect for gaming it can be overclocked but it does not have hyper threading has four cores and four threads so be careful don't expect to be rendering and playing games and stuff like that at the same exact time so I'm saying be aware of that also the upgradable thing I also chose was the motherboard. I changed it to a Z series, as you can see right here. The Asus. Also, you can choose to buy this over the other more motherboard, which would be smart because this is a Z series and it's also compatible with it. And also, all you would have to do is change out the CPU, and then you're good to go. So this is my opinion of what you should get for eight hundred to a thousand dollar build. If you guys appreciate this video, I know it's not really that graphical and shows you that much stuff. It's really not that amazing. At the same time, I did try, as you can see right here. This is what I meant by the motherboards. You see the price difference is only like six bucks, and this one is overclockable and it's the same exact for the L50. Let's see what the difference is real quick. I'm going to see the SAT cables. No, nope, it has zero difference basically. There's the only difference right here is you can. No, it's an upgrade basically. The only difference is the Pro 3, and this is the Pro 4. That's the only difference, but this is overclockable. So if you guys like this video, like, comment, subscribe, share this video. If you guys actually do appreciate it, I would like it so you guys can post a like. And I tried my best on this video. I know it's not really graphically pleasing. It's really not that amazing as people make it seem. I've seen other videos of people making PCs, and it's really not that good. I know I have a PC. I can show you guys how I built it. I can take it apart and rebuild it, whatever. And it's really small. And if you guys want to see my PC, post comments below. If you guys like this video, like, comment, subscribe, share the video, get out there. Also, I have a Facebook page and the link in the description below. I also have the link to this page. I'm showing you all the parts and how they fit together and where you can buy them all for the lowest price in my link to the description below. So if you want to check it out, you guys want to buy yourself a PC, there's also other PCs there. They'll show you PCs with other people and how they built it, reviews of different parts and things. Guys, like, comment, subscribe. This is fun, guys. As always, have a nice day.